for me, even on this ground, to be sworn in as your governor. Four years after, I feel most humbled by the honor and gratified by the fortune of history to stand before you to be sworn in as governor for a second time in office. Having been elected in a globally adjourned, free, fair, and peaceful election on 28th October 2012. Today will not have been possible if God had not willed it. The scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Yes, we labored, but not in vain. Because the Lord is on our side. So to God Almighty, the owner of time and season, we owe a debt of gratitude for a day like this. God cannot adequately express my gratitude to you, my good people of Ondo State, for the impressive attendance and outpouring of emotions at our campaigners in every community visited during the electioneering campaign. I have profound appreciation for the action packed support of the artisans, the massive support of the market women, the firmness of the farmers, the principal stand of public servants, the loyalty of labor leaders, the ruggedness of road transport workers, including our cadre riders, the resolve of our royal fathers, the reassurance of our religious leaders, the resilience of our retirees, the commitment of our captains of industry, and of course, the staunchness and untiring energy of our students and our youth in general. We also salute our numerous friends on the social media. To all we see, the story of today will be written in years to come. And your doggedness, tenacity, consistency, and overall incorruptibility will be recorded for the attention of generations to come. We must show appreciation to Mr. President, Dr. Goodluck Ibele Jonathan, GCFR, for guaranteeing the ambience for a free, fair, and peaceful election through the timely, responsible deployment of security operatives. All we can do for him is to pray to God Almighty to give him the grace and the strength to take our nation onto greater heights. The leadership and members of the Labour Party at all levels were not only vigilant, but demonstrated commitment to the sustenance of democracy, not just in all those states, but in our generation in general. I want to urge you, ladies and gentlemen, to help me salute the leadership of the Labour Party, represented by the national chairman, Barrister Dan MNI, OFR. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. The good Lord will continue to uphold you. We must commend the leadership of organized labor at the national and state levels. Their decision to openly support good governance is a welcome development that will open a new prospect in the political development of our nation. Mention must be made of the fact that we enjoy cross-party endorsement from several politicians. We also acknowledge the support of the Afeni Ferry Patriarchs. They are ably represented the Yoruba Unity Forum, media practitioner, Ondo Odua Youth Group, and indeed friends and supporters, home and abroad, who in one way or the other help in the process of making today a reality. I must at this juncture thank my darling wife, Udukemi. I thank you for your support. I thank my children, and indeed all my family members, for their steadfast love and support at all times, in all seasons, even when it seems unreasonable to so do. In the past four years, ladies and gentlemen, we have sought to re-engineer the education sector to be able to produce truly competitive and socio-economically relevant products who will be equipped to climb the social ladder, to continually create
create a vibrant middle class that will continue to innovate and drive our development. Education must serve the present generation, like those before it, as a tool of social mobility. To do otherwise is to wittingly or unwittingly recycle generational poverty and cross the hope of generations for better lives. We can only do this at our peril because we shall be multiplying the tribe of hooligans, armed robbers, kidnappers, and suicide bombers. This is why in the past four years, we have invested massively in education. That is why we created the Education Quality Assurance Agency as a tool of effective monitoring, measurement, and evaluation. That is why we continuously incentivize